what is happening y'all welcome on back so we are going to jump first into duty undying 2 and then from there we'll do where there's a will your grace my lord i trust your journey was not overly onerous cyril you found a letter from father yes I have it here. If you would do us the honor, my lord. I ask much of you in the coming war, but I see no other way to secure a future for our duchy and our family. Yet even should we succeed in subduing the savages and winning back Drake's breath, the threat of the blight still looms, and only with all of Rosaria striving as one might. At last we overcome it. I have made plans to see us through. Such are the obstacles that stand in our way. It shall likely fall to you to continue my work. I know that you have the strength, courage, and will to do so. This shall be an arduous inheritance, and so I offer you another, that you may be reminded of the love and the faith that I hold for both of you. An inheritance? It would seem the late Archduke penned this missive shortly before his passing. The day before we left for Phoenix Gate. What are these plans he spoke of? His plans for the duchy, your grace. Your father entrusted them to my predecessor, the former bearer of the burning quill, who entrusted them in turn to me. The complete emancipation of bearers is their stated aim. But your father's dream did not end there. His Grace also spoke of building hospices to care for those stricken by the curse, and the founding of a new university to further the development of non-magical technologies. With the blight spreading ever more widely across the twins, Archduke Elwyn saw this as the only means of securing Rosaria's survival. He wished to see men and bearers treated as equals, and to see centuries of common wisdom overturned. Small wonder he did not think it achievable within his lifetime. But he thought it achievable nonetheless. Had he not, he would never have written this message. Nor would he have entrusted his vision to his most faithful aides. Those who would have stood with you, shielded you from the machinations of the less benevolent personages at court. It's a pity only they are still with us. Hmm. It is true that those most loyal to your father were the first to suffer the Duchess's wrath. But one at least remains, and she has come bearing gifts. What do you mean? Mayhap it is better that she explain, my lord. After all, the duties entrusted to me by my predecessor extended only to recovering his grace's will and arranging a meeting with the one who might execute it. Or a part of it, at least. And where is this woman? She awaits you in the archive, your grace. Thank you, Cyril. Shall we then? My lord, your grace. I... I hardly recognize you. I am Goditha, retainer of House Rosfield, loyal servant to the Phoenix and his shields. Your father, the Archduke Elwyn, entrusted me with the delivery of a gift. I only hope you can forgive my tardiness in bringing it to you. Lift up your head, Lady Goditha. You have our gratitude. For your service to our house, and to our father. I merely did my duty, as any proud Rosarian would. My lady, perhaps you could explain a little more? 
What exactly is the gift you bring? As I'm sure you know, it has long been the custom for the children of House Rosfield to be presented with certain keepsakes upon their coming of age. Indeed it has. Our father often spoke of the day when our turn would come. And had he lived to see it, he would have presented you with the treasures I bear. Matching armbands for you both. Alas, he did not live. Indeed, he was taken from us even before they could be completed. He had intended to claim the heartstone with which each armband was to be finished himself. But it was not to be. And his gifts remain incomplete. I see. It saddens me to bring them before you, as they are. It was your father's wish that you be presented with the finished articles, not these works in progress. But with his grace long since gone, and the stone left unclaimed, I had little choice. You are grown men now, and his house is yours. And while I would not presume to insist upon your claiming the heartstone in his stead, I know that nothing would have pleased him more than for you to do so. Thank you, Lady Godatha. What say you, Clive? What else? Of course, my lady. May our father's will be done. Oh, I am much obliged. Do you know where we might find this heartstone, my lady? I do. Though it may be a matter of a good deal more than simply happening upon it. It is found in the bellies of Elder Griffins, you see. We do at least know where to find one. A certain specimen has made its nest in Titan's Wake, not far from here. A certain specimen? You are most perceptive, Your Grace. In answer to your unspoken question, yes. In fact, this is the very same beast your father meant to slay. I have been tracking its movements since you were but a boy. Were you to slay it in his stead, as men of House Rosfield, it would surely make your father proud. What say you, Joshua? What else? I'm gonna mess this griffin up. Let's go. Eyes peeled, Joshua. Seamurg. There it is. Rossfield. Yeah, I can definitely parry that with some good timing.
Not even making it up to Bahamut. Is this the Heartstone? Thank the Founder you were safe. The Griffin is slain then? And the Heartstone claimed. Yes. This radiant luster, like frozen flame, it is just as your father described it. Thank you, my lord. Your grace. Your father would be so proud. Lady Goddatha. The lapidary is ready. Thank you, Cyril. I will be with him shortly. If you would excuse me, I shall have the stone cut and set forthwith. The armbands are complete. Pray, take them. They are yours. After all, heartstone is harder and more enduring than garnet, or even ruby. It symbolizes unwavering will and devotion. And the graven vines encircling the stone represent the unbreakable bonds between you. It's a message. Father knew we had enemies both inside and outside the duchy. Enemies who would thwart his vision. Only... With unwavering devotion would it ever be realized. And only if we stood together. As Phoenix and Shield. As brothers in arms. Only then might those enemies be overcome. Indeed. His grace knew the enormity of the task he would entrust to you, his heirs. But this was more than just a message. It was a promise. That he would always be with you. Thank you, Lady Goddatha. For remaining the steadfast custodian of our father's will. Forgive me, my lady, but there is something I don't quite understand. The Undying told me that after father died, mother claimed all of the ducal treasures for her own. Even if the armbands were incomplete, she would surely not have overlooked them. So, how were you able to keep them from her? Because I was the keeper of the vault. Though I was but a lowly servant, your father spoke to me of his intentions for the bands. Of the deep love he had for both of you, and his hopes for your future. In the days before the disaster at Phoenix Gate, I discovered that the Duchess had ordered her jewelry be sent away from the castle. It was then that I knew she meant to betray us. I tried to warn your father, but it was too late. When word of the fire reached Rosalith, I knew my time was short. So I took up the armbands and I fled into the night. And thank the Founder you did. Yet my duty to your father was incomplete. Not knowing what else to do, I followed the Griffin, thinking I might claim the Heartstone on its passing. And so my pursuit continued. Until Lord Cyril appeared before me. He informed me that His Grace's will had been recovered. And that his sons were alive and well. Lady Goddatha, on behalf of my father, and all the people of Rosaria, I thank you for your loyal service. As do I. Thank you, my lord. Your grace, for coming back to us. For giving my service meaning. The bands suit you well. It must be gratifying to finally receive the inheritance that was denied you for so long. It is. <laughs> and we thank you for the part you played, Cyril. <laughs> if you would permit me to play my part a little longer, might I suggest that you make your way to your father's memorial atop Hawk's Cry Cliff? Let him see that you have received his blessing and that his vision lives on in you. I suppose it would be churlish not to. What do you say, Clive? 
Should we pay Father a visit? I think we should. I was hoping to be able to offer him my thanks before we left for Origin. Your father's helm is enshrined there. It has been since... since the day we recovered it from Phoenix Gate. I prithee claim it. For it too is a part of your inheritance. And I do not doubt that your father would prefer it in your hands than perched upon some lonely rock. Thank you, Cyril. Come on, Clive. He's waiting. Unwavering will and an unbreakable bond. Do you really think we're strong enough? To save the world? Of course. To have overcome father's political enemies. That had no son. Especially knowing what we know now. Mother was truly capable of. But perhaps these bands would have helped. Knowing he was with us would have made all the difference. Seventy three meters away, but with having to run this cliff and dip down. It's just back there. Father always fought for what he believed was right. It wasn't until that night at Phoenix Gate that I realized I had never fought for anything. I always had someone else to do the fighting for me. No matter how fate conspired against him, he never lost heart, never looked back, never stopped fighting. To me, he was the greatest of men. And I've been trying to live up to his ideals ever since. We all have, Clive. We all have. And we'll keep trying. Because that's what he would have wanted. <laughs> what he would have done himself. Even if it meant standing against the very gods in the heavens. I shall be borrowing this, father, if I may. That you might watch over us. As we follow in your footsteps.
won't lay you down. Onward then. Onward. To the end. And to a new beginning. Join Clef's party and will remain with him until the party for origin. Hmm. Kind of seems superfluous. Like, I don't know why it's informing me of that now. And, like, it hasn't been something that's been going on for a minute. Like, what would have happened if I did the the mission with the uh, Torkoal? <laughs> no, I can't leave. I'm coming on the boat. This Quint- okay, okay. I remember who Quentin is now, yeah. Quentin is definitely the dude. Quentin, I have a proposal for you. Do you now? Something tells me you'll be asking more of me than a cask of goat and gold. Go on then. Propose. You'd have me convince the chiefs and chamberlains of the realm that they should simply swallow their pride and do the one thing that has proved impossible for thousands of years. Was there anything else? Perhaps I can fetch you a meat pie as well. I know it's a lot to ask, but I can think of none better suited to the role. And you'd have me give up what little I have left to do it. I told you, Clive. The people of Lost Wing are my family, and I cannot abandon them. You'll have to find someone else. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> so am I. And why might that be? What he's asking. How is it any different to what you've done so far? They want you to speak for those who can't speak for themselves. That's what you do best. <laughs> if it's the vineyard you're worried about. We'll see that the grapes are picked and the tons filled. You know we will. It's not that. Then what is it? You said yourself we're family. Don't you trust us? You know that's not what I'm... Then what are you saying? That only we are worth saving? Why turn your back on everyone else? You convinced us we could build new lives for ourselves. And if you can do that, who's to say you couldn't convince the entire realm? A stirring argument. I fear that any rejoinder I make might fall somewhat flat by comparison. So you'll join us? <sighs> Where do you need me? Field Marshal Havel will want to speak with you in person. He's currently in Port Isolde. I can arrange for a party of curse breakers to accompany you there. That would be very much appreciated. I hear the roads are far from safe these days. <laughs> Hopefully not for long. My uncle will want to know that his plan is taking shape. Go over here, Tabor, do that, and then we'll make our way back to the hub and close it all in. Lord Marquis, if you have a moment. What is it, Cyril? One of our brethren lately journeyed across the strait 
in order to pursue a new avenue of inquiry in our ongoing investigation. He sent an owl some while ago, but we have heard naught from him since. Was he surveying another fallen ruin? No. The object of his study was a savior cult that has arisen in ash in recent years. We believe it may have some connection to the Circle of Malleus, an ancient religion that worshipped Ultima as its god. By gaining an understanding of this new faith, we hoped to learn more of the Circle's original beliefs. And so you sent one of your brothers to Ash, a continent teeming with orcs and Akashic. Fully cognizant of the risks, yes. I entrusted the mission to one of the most able of our order, the Third Chair, a master of the arts of combat and survival, both. Though he has been silent for some days now, I have thus far refrained from sending any others in search of him, lest they be lost in turn. Yet, it seemed only right to inform you of the situation, given your unique experience of the perils of Ash. For as you so earnestly advised me, it would not do to abandon a man to his fate, when he might yet be saved. It would not. But Ash is a big place. Can you be any more specific? Perhaps. The last owl I received from him mentioned a village where he had heard the cult were wont to assemble. Mickelberg was its name. It lies in the southern reaches of Walud. If aught ill befell him, I expect it did so there. All right. I'll see what I can do. You are much too kind, my lord. Go then, with my hopes. I think I know... I think I have a fast travel near that spot already. We're about halfway between them, but I can teleport here and immediately mount the choker bell. Fly, Ambrosia. We might try and push through here because we got we're basically just turning in these last couple quests, and then I think we are. I think we're ready to go. Shit. Okay, never mind. It might have been faster to go the other way. I'm getting caught in all these twists and turns. No mistakes. People here that haven't turned. These people aren't turned. And the village seems safe enough at least. What is going on here? Ah, did you too heed the call? Heed the call? No, I... I came here looking for someone. To be honest, I... I wasn't sure I'd find him here. Let alone all of you. Hmm, is that so? What are you doing here? Is this... where you live? It is my home. The others... they... they heeded the call. You keep saying that. 
What do you mean? They came here to perform the rite, just as King Barnabas instructed. This village is their altar, where they shall cast their souls upon the gentle waters and give themselves to the Lord. Give themselves? Oh, Lord, cleanse us of our sins. Let us be reborn in your loving arms. Free us from the torment of this mortal realm. They want to be saved. Yeah, that ain't Forgive what me. your god does. But did another foreigner like me come here? He was probably wearing a cowl. You mean the traveler from stone? Yes. He's staying at my house. Thank you. If you don't mind, I'll go and greet him. They seek the same salvation Barnabas did. At least the third chair still lives. Let's go and find him. Yeah, this whole place is creepy. Excuse me. Are you with the Undying? I am. And so it would appear, are you? Lord Rosfield, if I am not mistaken. That's right. And you must be the third chair. I am. Cyril was worried for your safety. He sent me to find you. Then I must apologize. I did not mean to trouble the bearer of the burning quill, much less you, my Lord Marquis. He said that you had failed to report. Is there a reason for that? I came here to study the followers of this new faith. But the more I learned of them, the more my own faith began to falter. You have seen them at their prayers, have you not? devote themselves to the veneration of their lord with a fervor I have never seen before. Praying night and day that they might be rid of their wicked wills and reborn in their savior's light. Not that they might be granted respite from their worldly woes, but so that they might continue to serve him. Serve him with all of their beings. I, too, swore to devote my life to the service of my lord and master, but this... ...tis different. It is more. Yeah, it's because it's a basically a cult, my dude. And so I would see it through to the end. See these people safe, that they might achieve their dream. That they might do their duty to their lord. Even if it should keep me from doing my duty to mine. You do understand what their dream is, don't you? I do, my lord. They would cast aside their wills and become a Kashyyyk. I know that it may be hard to believe, but to these people, that is the very essence of salvation. Forgive me, my lord. But I must remain here. If you are to return to Master Cyril, I would consider it a great... Did you hear that, my lord? I'll go find out what. Shit's going down. Monsters and mayhem. Beneath the flood. Oh no. Well, they got to become a cash like they wanted. There must be something I can do. <laughs> it goes as well. Found her. You ready, brother? Ready.
to see something real quick. That 3,000. Boy, yes, we do. We meet again. I've killed your kind before. big boy oh what the hell my uh, my counter never uh, didn't go off that's weird I messed up my rotation pretty badly there. I was trying to do a Giga Flare to throw myself up to the, uh, the point I wanted to be at, but I went. Should have killed it outright, but it's okay.
speak to me. I had to save them. That they might have a chance to find true salvation. By devoting themselves to the service of their lord. Just as I did. When the Undying plucked me from the gutter. And gave me a cause to believe in. A duty to serve was everything to me. And I would not deny them that fulfillment. Even if they must become a Kashyyyk in order to achieve it. Forgive me, my Lord Marquis. I did not mean to trouble you with this. My findings. Could you deliver them to Master Cyril for me? Of course. Your duty will be done. Ah. Look, my lord. They are saved. Saved. Found her. I should get this report to Cyril. My Lord Marquis, welcome back. I am glad to see you hale and whole. I met with your third chair, Cyril. He bade me deliver his findings to you. Thank you, my lord. He remained in Ash? He died protecting the villagers from an echo. I buried him in Mickleburg. I'm... sorry that I couldn't save him. If you could not save him, no one could. The villagers, they were... believers. In this savior cult, they prayed to their god that they might be unburdened of their wills. Then an ether flood came, and their wish was granted. Your brother sacrificed himself that they might live, even knowing that that life was death by another name. Then he perished defending liberty, a hero's end. For the right to choose how one dies is no less sacred than the right to choose how one lives. Huh. Sid would agree. He wanted to build a world where people could die on their own terms. A noble ambition. To die for one's cause is the most perfect expression of one's faith. It matters not how misguided others might judge one's decision to be. Only that the decision is one's own. We live according to the teachings of our order. We believe in them. We protect them. And yes, we die for them. For better or worse, that is our creed. But he didn't die for your creed. He died to save them. And you still believe that what he did was right? I believe... that he believed it was. We of the Undying are not slaves, but willing servants. And this was his will. 
the ultimate expression of it. <sighs> all right. I'd like to know this man's name, Cyril. To know the names of all the undying who've fallen in the line of duty. They died serving my house. It's only right that I remember them. That is my duty. Of course. I shall fetch the Book of Martyrs at once. My lord, it has been, and shall ever be, the greatest honor of my life to serve House Rosfield. Though our duties may differ, yours is no less important. I pray with all my heart for your success. And were they here, I have no doubt but that every one of my fallen brothers and sisters would feel the same. Oh, got all the signboards. Right, and the only thing left... Hopefully, is just turning these in. I think we're ready for origin. No, wait, there's a missive. Uncle, I bring good news. The Field Marshal has agreed to your plan. Ha! Of course he has! I didn't doubt you for a moment, dear boy. Rutherford is accompanying him back to your manor in Port Azolder as we speak. They will await your return there. As will one other. One other? Who, exactly? Lord Havel was concerned that even if he could get the realm's armies to agree to an accord, he might not be as successful in convincing those with political power. He asked if I might have a solution, and I suggested a certain Imperial Lord Magistrate turned Liberator. One of your co-conspirators? Master Quinton would probably call me one of his, but yes. Another outlaw, then. Just the thing we need to put these rotten politicos in their places. Good thinking, Clive. I'm glad you approve. The more the merrier, eh? Uncle. Assuming Havel and Quinton can solve our problem with the armies, you still haven't mentioned how we might manage the grain shortages. Oh, don't you worry, my boy. The seven high houses will be seeing to that. They have all agreed to make the most generous of donations. Oh, of course, it did take a little persuasion, but luckily I had some unexpected help. From who? Why, you, my boy. Rumor has it that you rescued the Lady Ariane's head steward, Rockford, from a horde of bloodthirsty bandits. It was more of a handful. Well, the old battleaxe was so pleased. She had a shipload of talents delivered to my private docks by the next new moon. And when the other houses saw the parsimonious old crone's purse strings finally loosen, they as good as tripped over themselves in the rush to follow suit. <laughs> I'm happy to hear it. Now... I must be getting back to the manor. Join us there at your earliest convenience, would you? Of course, Uncle. So it sounds like this quest isn't quite done yet. I'm gonna go a bit longer. Oh, is it warping me there now? It's a long black screen. And how, pray tell, will we get that grain to the capital if the roads are still overrun with Akashic? You'll find another bloody road. I only have so many men, and I'm not about to send them headlong into an ether flood. That is, unless you'd have them turn as well. Well, I'd certainly eat less. Oh, says the man with a belly bigger than a band of curls. My soldiers actually need their rations. Without any food to keep them going, they'll be dead even before you've sent them on your fool's errand. <clears throat> if I may, gentlemen. Perhaps I might suggest an alternative approach. 
Though supply routes are indeed disrupted, there is no shortage of ships. Indeed, they bob away in every bay from here to Randalar, awaiting a safe haven. Allow them to make port and fill their bellies full of grain. And once those who crowd the cities are fed, ferry the displaced back to the countryside to work the fallow fields. Ah, but I'm sure that you wish to continue your discussion. Forgive the interruption. Two such firm friends as yourselves need no help from the likes of me. Rutherford spoke fondly of the great bond between you. Us? Friends? I can't stand the man! Clive, I'm beginning to question the quality of the company you keep. And what kind of company are you expecting him to keep? The man's a criminal! Criminal? How... How dare you! You are not fit to breathe the same air as this... Fine! Upstanding young gentleman! Upstanding? He calls himself Sid the Bloody Outlaw! Once more unto the breach. <laughs> Oh, man. Shall we begin again? What we seek here is not to create a new nation, nor to claim the thrones of those that already exist. We wish simply to bring stability to the realm that mankind might weather the current storm. And to do that, we must convince those in power, the generals, the statesmen, the nobles, that our cause is just. There will be disagreements, yes. And I imagine some resistance, much resistance. But we cannot let that deter us. If we show them the path, show them that we walk it ourselves, then I am confident they will follow. The fate of the world lies in my nephew's hands. But the well-being of her people lies in ours. And we must not squander the chance that Clive has given us. Uncle Byron, I... Now, with that settled, let's move on to the signing of the Accord. For what great moment in history hasn't been accompanied by a little ceremony? <clears throat> Citizens of Valisthea, I present to you the Triunity. Rutherford! Mike Will! Well, my boy, the stage is set. That it is. This is the role you were born for. Now I ask only that you trust in the talents of your supporting cast. We shall play our parts to the best of our abilities, that you might have the opportunity to shine. The realm needs its Sir Crandall, and there is no better Crandall than you, Clive. I uh, want you to keep this signed accord as proof of our faith in you. I will. Thank you, Uncle. Do you think that thing? What I believe to be one last quest. <sighs> Knew I should have split this into two episodes. <laughs> uh, let's go grab it though. We didn't come this way to peter out with one quest remaining. And who knows, maybe it's a quick one. Maybe it's just closure to a quest we already did. No, I have no active quest, so it is a brand new one. From who, though? Though her icon brought her much suffering, the loss of Shiva weighs heavy on her heart. We prefer friends indeed. We not seek to lighten that burden, even but only a fraction, before we depart for the skies. I would speak on this more in private. If Joshua was worried about Jill, I should go and speak with him. Well, 
let's wrap up here. For all I know, this, this, I mean, it's our last quest. This might actually end up taking a minute. So let's take our time, get through it. And then after that, we make our way to Origin. <laughs>